birthday. Oh, what an occasion. Bobby, we almost forgot the streamers. They're in the kitchen. Bobby, in the cupboard, over the pantry. Everything's going to be perfect for this party. Perfect for my baby coming into this world. Bobby, help me blow up more balloons. <laughs> Nico's just out with some of his friends, but he'll be back shortly. Come in, Aunt Edith. These decorations, oh my! You've managed to make this nice household to see you, Uncle usual. Dube. Oh. Hey there, Bobby. Uh, how are you going? You, uh, you've seen the game of the uh, Great Pumpkin. Had a secret, Joe. Like, I'm uh, so happy uh, you could all come. Hey, yeah. Wow, is that the oh, there. They come in the, the parking. Uh, Everybody, the birthday boy is here! Come around, come around! Make space for Uncle Dube. Ha <laughs> Uncle Dube. I'm a biscuit. I've been baking all day. Well, no, so have we. Nico, so why are your eyes red? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Oh my God, it's hi, Bobby, Bobby, Nico.
Maria, it's Nico. How are you? Doing well. Yourself? Not bad. Well, actually, the reason I'm calling is, well, I think I must have eaten some bad chicken or something, because I'm um, really not feeling too good. Listen, get better and I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thanks, I guess. I'll, I'll uh, be sure to check. This is Maria. Yeah, Maria, it's Nico. So it's, uh, definitely gastro. I got it real bad. It's, it's gonna be a few more days, but it's hard to say. Have you gone to the clinic? If it's going to be any longer, I'm going to need a doctor's note. Not yet. Listen, it's been coming out on both ends all day and night. I've barely been able to leave the bathroom, let alone go downtown. I did not need to hear that. Just Get me that note before you come back to work. Sure thing, Maria. I'll, I'll get right on it. Yes, Nico? Oh, oh, oh uh, uh, hey, uh, yes, so it's, it's clear enough, but, but it's still not 100%. Uh, I can go get that doctor's note you wanted, though. Listen, so get the doctor's note. Service levels are astronomically low. Quantity samples for hours before they leave anyway. I just don't think it's a good idea. I, just, I wouldn't want to have a client on the line and not have to rush to the bathroom or nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow, though, no doubt. No doubt at all. Fine. A call to artists, open for submissions, deadline them all. What a tease. I'm itching to submit, but any inkling I have of spontaneity or courage is extinguished by a suffocating sense of realism. True artists hold some ineffable quality that elevates beyond the ordinary scope of man. They're closer to gods than humans. I idolize him. I am no artist. A call to artists, open for submissions. Deadline tomorrow. Every day I somehow wake feeling worse than the last. I'm unhappy, dissatisfied. And any release I get from this pragmatic world, every hiatus, escape, I enter a writer's block, a period of time when I'm just as frustratingly idle. It's an impasse, a sign I don't belong here either. Both spheres are labor, and both I make no progress. I just trudge along. I am no artist. Deadline tomorrow. I want to write. I want to break this cycle. I have the desire, I just don't know how to do it. The time is fleeting. There's so much pressure. I'm in my head too damn much. I've never been put up to exposure, never exercised vulnerability, nobody knows who I am. Consequently, anything I submit will become the entirety of my body of work, my artistic ability, my potential, my being. Susceptible to scrutiny and judgment, anything at all has to be my everything. It has to be perfect, exceptional, without compromise. Otherwise, the condescending eyes of others will reduce me to what I am. I am no artist. And maybe the more I say it, the more likely I'll accept it. Maybe I'll move on with my life, do something productive. A 
Call to artists, open for submissions, deadline tomorrow. Fat chance. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hey, lad, how goes it? Well, <coughs> following my daily deed, it would appear that I've run out of weed. And you know what's funny? I haven't got any money. Could you lend some to someone in need? Boy, bastard, you. I think I can muster up a few G's. On credit, but you're not getting any cash. That's for damn sure. Hey, thanks a million. What's new with you? Ah, same old. Say, have you been working on anything unrelated to limericks? Not really, no. Uh, I've been working on some poem, but decided to give up on the whole thing. And why is that? Well, mostly because it's a piece of shit. Never turned out on paper like it did in my head. The age old story. Nonsense! What's it about? What, my poem? What do you think I'm talking about, you rocket? Yes, your poem. Oh, uh, well, it's kind of like... Well, it falls under the category of a neutral woman. A constable woman? That's no way to address a wandering lady. Well, it's a coming-of-age story, but specific to an artist. An artistic awakening, so to speak. Ah, I see. Such as portrait? Yes. Mine's more snapshot of the dilettante as a man-child, but yeah. Ah, quit being so hard on yourself, lad. Aside from being shite, did the poem have any kind of content? Did it rhyme? Was it funny? Was it happy, sad? Give me some insight. Yeah, it's a bit of everything. It doesn't rhyme, but it's a song. I personally find it funny, while others might find it pretty sad. And I'm not saying this to convey complexity, but rather convolution. It's not figured out. And it never will be. I've given up. The poem's mere onset is a symptom of my delusion. Nico, the fact that you respect the intricacies of the topic tells me that you should be the one to write about it. Your perspective matters too. I think there'll be a laugh if you finish it. If it sucks, let it suck. We can roll it up and burn it. But lad, I have a hunch that it won't. I appreciate it, but I'm not so sure. Look, thanks for the weed. I'll be seeing you. Long before. My experience is not one that can be so easily explained as being a case of existential dread. I have one of these crises every other day, always when least expected. It makes them predictable, really. In fact, I've come to anticipate them. Their haphazard randomness mimics one of the most consistent elements of life. Its everlasting capacity for change. Having things figured out goes against the most fundamental nature of life itself. I don't have things figured out. I am no clairvoyant. I'm okay with its uncertainty. I may never have things figured out. But why would I want to? My situation is not simply some solitude gone haywire. My want for individuality has alienated me from my compeers. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy and I did it to myself. Pangs of loneliness are only small repercussions of the desire to be alone. I like being alone sometimes. And sometimes I like being with people. And when I do, I have a community of family and friends with whom I share mutual affection. If I need more company, I'll find it. I will network and I'll socialize 
even if this can feel nerve-wracking and anxiety-inducing. Yes, I'm alone, but my suffering does not come from loneliness. You cannot prove my plight is a product of indulging in inebriating substances. I have an addictive personality, but I'm no addict. I'm positive my usage doesn't support my cause, but I'm not convinced it's the culprit. I'll need to learn moderation, again and again to be sure. But so long as I remain self-aware, I'll be alright. And it's a myth that drugs magically inspire creativity. That's something I'll equip me, but hey, you're fun when used wisely. We've got a good relationship for the time being. I don't think my disposition can be deduced to a diagnosis of depression. I'm not depressed. Maybe episodically, but who isn't? Enveloping me with that word would be simplistic and would be an insult to those actually suffering. I can be happy. I will find happiness and I will learn how to cope when I'm not. I believe what I have is an inability to tolerate boredom, which compared to all the other possibilities seems absolutely harmless, but it's not. An empty moment holds the most weight. Like Pandora's box, vices are unleashed to wreak havoc, and therein only lies the hope that the boredom will be alleviated. What is it, Nico? What is it? has malignant qualities that magnifies the effects of all my other problems, obscuring and mangling them into a hole of comorbidity, which caused which, who done it, what came first, the chicken or its capacity for suffering, to be born is to be mauled, crawling over jagged teeth in the eggshell and disembowelmently eviscerated, Resembling the helminthic mating ball of gyri that is my problem brain, there's no relief. The boredom has become immune to the distractions I medicate it with. It multiplies and destroys me from the inside. I am become boredom. It is me now. And I can't help but feel that art is the antidote. When I create, I'm not bored. Exactly. If I'm being honest, I could be a bit better. And oh, wait, hold up a minute. Who are you supposed to be? I am 
So you're the reason I hate myself so much. Yeah, I call bullshit. Why then am I so self-critical? Anytime I see myself, I only see shortcomings and failure. Well, who is to blame then? Tell me that. Well, I don't feel so lucky. Do you know how I feel on a day to day? It's awful. Well, that doesn't sound so bad at all. Wait a sec. Do you think I want to feel like this? You're making it sound like it's my fault. This is a lot of information to take in. When did I start going astray? That's also beside the point. Life is not a straight line. You know that. Maybe you were meant to go down the wrong path for a while. Maybe the wrong path was the right path at the time. None of that matters. So long as you stop going down the wrong path, when it presents itself as such. For you, it obviously is. Okay, well, what do I do now? But how? I haven't been able to do art in so long. It's just not feasible. Well, I definitely buy into the philosophy, so I may as well live by it. And yeah, when you think of the obstacles, the solutions come hand in hand. In fact, obstacles are like parasites feeding off their solution until the solutions fight back. It's all so obvious now. My friends distract me, so I'll be a recluse. My family discourages me, so I'll be an orphan. My job consumes me, so I'll be unemployed. If I need money for rent, I'll go homeless. For food, I'll go hungry. For clothes, I'll go buck fucking naked. This tedium of routine and productivity is a farce and only takes me away from my true calling. Sleep takes too long to accomplish. Artwork is the only exercise I need. Having fun is too big an investment to justify. If asceticism is what's needed for art, asceticism it shall be. I will be a monk for art, leaving nothing to infiltrate my focus. None of my obligations are obligatory. There's no consequence to not fulfilling my promises. If I'm seen as unreliable, good. 
No one should have to rely on me. I pay no mind to how I'll be perceived, so long as I can be known as an artist. It may not be easy, nothing worthwhile is, but it has to be done so I can do what I love. Love? Where have you been? Where have you been? My oh, love. I was so worried. Some of the brides we said, well, my relationship. let's not talk about that now. What's important is that you're here, my knight in shining armor. Certainly, Nico, I have my to love. Great you. I can't remember if King. I told you or not, but one of the bridesmaids, her husband, is a well-regarded real estate agent, and he showed me this house, this big, beautiful My love fire. will... Unlimited source of comfort and security. You're the woman of my dreams, a goddess. But in the very same breath, you are a temptress that leads me astray. Finding you, my destination, has left me more lost than I ever could have known. For every good, you bring evil. Your light casts darkness, your love, hatred, your shelter leaves me vagrant, your presence alienates me from myself, all that you give, you take away. Indulging in your love would only result in my complacency, I'd only muster fake intimacy, I'd not be there, I'd be in a fantasy, of a potential life I wouldn't know, a world of what could have been. I can't settle, it wouldn't be fair. I'd be selfishly stealing your life for fear of living my own. We would mutually erode 
until the voice in my head and in my heart inevitably prevailed that I must leave you. At first I dismissed it as nervous paranoia. I know your intent is not to sabotage. You have a life of your own. Goddess, you are a temptress, and your mastery of the former solidifies your role as the latter. It's a shame the way the universe is organized. A terrible, terrible irony. A relationship is a vow to utmost commitment and unrelenting support, to a mutual worship and admiration, to give oneself entirely so that the love can continue to grow. This is a vow I simply cannot make. You have strengthened me, goddess. You have strengthened me, temptress. You have taught me the power of the love I am seeking. You will always be a muse, but I must never find you. done what I've been asked. I, I've done what's required. Yet, yeah. why does my dedication yield no gratitude? My love remain unrequited. My sacrifice go without reciprocity. There's nothing stopping me. There's nothing standing in my way. Nothing between me and my heart. Yet, why does something seem off? Something's wrong. Something's off. What's going on? My dream didn't burn out like some raging inferno. It was a mured, killed by its own feebleness. 
I expected an epic, a showdown between myself and art, where I could assert my dominance over it, hone in on it, make it my tool. But I was lured into an abyss. Art has eluded me, vanished into thin air. I was stood up. I expected at least some encounter, anything at all. Even if art defeated me, at least I would have tried. But I waited, atrophying, unworthy of its presence. I risked everything for a mirage. Art does not exist within me. My remnants are now too deprived to even consider the possibility of duel. Triumph would be an outright impossibility. If inspiration fell onto my lap, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I will never reverse the hierarchy of my servitude. Art is my absent master, and I its nameless slave. Why was I coerced by this monster? Was it in want of another clueless victim as a reminder of its importance? Does even an omnipotent force need to preserve its ego? It would seem that art is the ultimate temptation, an unattainable goal that masquerades itself as refuge, proselytizing the susceptible, persuading the vulnerable, eating the weak, like me. I was deceived by its rules, misled by its trickery. I am nothing but a sucker who has fallen for the bait. Now I'm so goddamn embarrassed, I can't go back. People will see right through me, but I failed. I have no more will. Art has taken it all away. The There's nothing left. Hey, observing self, what the fuck is going on? Would have been nice to know a little earlier, don't you think? This is all starting to be a bit frustrating, but I guess this was never supposed to be easy, right? So what then were you referring to when you told me to eliminate my obstacles? What does that mean? Yeah, don't stroke my ego or nothing, just point me in the right direction. Looking forward to it. I'm not gonna lie to you, I hit quite a few pounds of happy before this hour But I'll try to make sure they don't end up on the floor by the end of it Yes sir, can't help but being happy all the time Can't say no to happy My fault for being such a damn optimist, I guess Oh, but I'm glad to be here on this lovely occasion can't you tell I'm all washed up? <laughs> Who needs a shower?
In all seriousness, I'm going to play all some old cowboy tunes, and Sheila's going to keep the happy pouring all night long. Ain't that right, darling? Okay, drink up. Here she comes. Everyone that knows me knows I'll be on strike till they bring back the expo. Had my best days, wish I could have used one once in a while. But they're all gone now, life's not what I thought it would be. What's the point anymore of being poor on me? Boo hoo hoo, well, 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 I know. You can find me on a pill, I got nothing to offer. I got this feeling that even a prostitute tell me to get off her. I live in a tenement, squatters in the halls, critters in the walls, communal bathrooms. And still, I can barely afford the rent. My last good meal was served through an umbilical cord. About the same time, I picked up this habit of smoking tobacco. I wish I was never born. My mom won't take me back though. Cause she's dead, mostly. But even if she wasn't, who would want a sun that can never shine? I'm coming up to the end of my life and all I gotta show for it is a few herniated discs and lungs looking like the inside of a vacuum cleaner. People ask me, Mr. Old Man, I see, but Mr. Old Man is my father. They say, Old Man, you seem intelligent, clever, like you may have turned some heads in your old day. Hey there, flattery will get you nowhere. What unfortunate circumstances are responsible for your disposition of detriment and despair? And I let them know. I can be more cans of beans if I could operate machines. See, for a time, man, if I'd been an accountant, had pushed a bit more paper, I'd have asked a half an acre. Done some more to pull and earn the love of a woman. If it weren't for this guitar, I'd drive a fancy car. Not for the stream, I'd be living like a king. I started going wrong when I started writing songs. Oh, the opportunities I missed. Trying to be an artist. Trying to be an artist. Trying to be an artist. Don't you ever be an artist. Hey, mister, I think we're supposed to talk about something, you and me. I don't talk about nothing unless it's over the days. Huh? Oh, you get it. All right, I'll rack them up. Not so fast, kid. There'd have to be more on the table than those plastic billiard balls if you catch my drift. I'll wager. What did you have in mind? Only thing that exists in this here godforsaken purgatory. Which is? Dominion. Okay, your break. Bet your ass it is, punk. Nice shot. I know. So who are you supposed to be, anyway? I'm the singular reason your dreams of being an artist ain't going down the pipe. Three's going in the corner cross side. What makes you the sole reason? Without me, you probably would have submitted some of your poetry. There's <laughs> a seven corner pocket. Oh, Where's God. the harm in that? That's what I've been wanting to do this whole time. Are you kidding me? Have you read your god awful doggerel? You almost made me miss my shot with that one. Almost. No. We become a laughing stop. Whatever I do, most of my value. Will I ever compose something of value? You don't seem to hold me in very high regard. Let's just see. Let me took this old cubo right here. Jeez. No fun shooting behind the ball, is it, boy? I'll say. I sure hope that's your last stroke. <laughs> Suck. I'm creative. You miss like I couldn't imagine. I'll give you that. I ain't seen so many shakes since my stints at the slaughterhouse. So you hold me back because you expect me to prevail? Now you're getting it. If you want to be better than other people, you gotta be better. See what I'm saying? Now that's cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not trying to be better than other people. I'm just trying to write poetry. Naivete. Listen here. Anytime you do anything, you gotta be a pistol. That ain't up to me. Even please, don't disturb the concentration when we take those back straight to Benzo. But isn't art subjective? Wow, wow. Art is about as subjective as this year game of pool. They go and laugh, and there's winners, and there's losers. There's the bear and mom, and you scratch it like a dog with fleas. There's success, and there's ridicule. You don't need to break the game with the art because the artists can set the game to be better. No, we are better than a status quo. We are the pound by crap. Now shut up when I shoot. But don't you work up to that? Isn't it a progress? Don't you fail and 
fail and fail again until you reach one iota of success? Uh, right, man. Here's another chance. You haven't been able to demonstrate too much. Just keep on playing me in these fucking jams. These jams are like This is a competition for fuck's sakes. You think things are for you? Just get your damn shot over with so I can own you. Yeah. Why not? You didn't call it. So? There's no serendipity. What does that mean? Everything's gotta be delivered. Oh, come on. You're lucky there's that contraption all holding around scrupulously pocketed balls, Captain. If it wasn't so hard up, quarters, get on this game. Well, I guess I'll just have her on the table. No more chances. Now let me see here. I think I'm gonna go for it. So you're as good at pool now as when you started. And you never missed a shot, I presume. As far as I know. Bullshit. I can see why that's hard for you to believe, but it's the cold hard for the truth. Bank off the inner end. I've never seen someone wanting to create so damn hell bent on destruction. Hey, what was that? No, there wasn't, you just twitched. So it's a scratch, right? Isn't it? So I can put it anywhere. No, you put it anywhere. I thought you said there was no serendipity or cool. So I can put it right here and win, right? Win the win. Use your imagination. Wait, wait, wait. Hypocrite! Can you please just say loud where you're shooting? You know what they say about assuming me. Why fucking there? Is this game rigged? to win by a forfeit. The bar. Thirsty. Writing. I am. At least I'll be doing our good coward. favor kids do me a favor never grow up to be an artist Him, aren't you? Admit it! Yes, 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 Nico. Let me explain. Let me explain. Please, please. You better do it quicker. He's a goner. It's all for security. Security? Security's the biggest risk in life. Panamint circuses. You can't fool me. Huh? No, Nico, that's not what I mean. If I kill him, if he dies, maybe I won't have to take myself so goddamn seriously all the time. You must be killed by these entities. They may seem damaging at times. If these manifestations are here to help me, why are they always so fucking cruel? Why do they make me feel so insecure all the time? That always gravitate towards negativity? Riddle me that one. The reasons will reveal themselves over the course of your life, Nico. Each revelation will enlighten you further, give you a chance to understand your origins, and bring you closer to your ultimate goal. 
which is Ah! Fucking fine! I won't kill him! You win. I think you're ready. Ready for what? Who are you supposed to be? There isn't about death that scares you. What? I don't fear death. I mean, I don't want to die, but I don't fear it. There's no need to deny it. It's okay to be afraid. I'm not afraid. Fearing death is nothing more than an atavistic reflex. Survive in order to propagate one's genes. That's just biology. And a triviality. Doesn't affect me. Not like you manifestations do. Fearing death is not the same as survival instinct. Then differentiate them. Go ahead. Survival is sequela to fearing death. Fearing death stems from an even greater and more powerful fear. Which is? The fear of life. What is it with you fuckers and opposites? Is nothing I've come to believe true? Is up, down, day, night, yesterday, tomorrow? Am I just backwards and inside out in a non-existent unreality of contradiction? It's not a contradiction, okay? It's duality. Life is a Leviathan, hidden in plain sight, ruminating in obliviousness. We are unable to grasp our fear of life because it involves a free will which we refuse to acknowledge. We have the potential to become its master, but deny our accountability when we fail to do so. The scapegoat, the escape valve, is a fear of death. Death is a more tangible fear and due to its inevitability, you don't feel responsible. But you can overcome death through the dissection. You must ask yourself, what about it scares you? It doesn't scare me! I'm not bogged down by death, it's just boredom. Which is fixed by doing my artwork. Nico, your negligence will eclipse the meaning of your life. The meaning of life? Oh, come on, Mr. Know-it-all. What's the meaning of life, then? The question is moot and it is useless. Some say that the search for meaning is what gives life meaning. Some say the very same search is an absurd symbol of man's folly. Some say it has no meaning. Some say it's unknowable. And there's an infinite list of isms that all claim it's something else, and they're all equally right and wrong. You're not meant to know the meaning of life, but instead find the right way to live, the meaning of your life. And how do I do that? You ask yourself, what about death and spills fear? I don't fear death! Nico, just try, please. Ugh. Goes nothing. <sighs> what about death instills fear? Well, I guess it feels like a bit of pressure. Why? 
Well, I might die before I finish my artistic projects, before I accomplish my goals. Why? I don't know. Not having enough time to develop to who I want to be as an artist? I don't know. Why? You know, I'm really not appreciating this Socratic regress. What happens if you don't accomplish your goals? Well, I'd be a failure. Does that bother you? Yes! Why? Oh, fuck off! Doesn't that seem obvious? Does it challenge yourself? <sighs> well, I guess if I fail, I won't be accepted by others, and if I'm not accepted by others, I won't accept myself. But I shouldn't place so much importance on the perception of others, and if I practice self-acceptance and appreciate myself for what I am and not what I'm not, I'll be emancipated from my fear of death. Voila, epiphany. A great syllogism, but not one that so explicitly applies to yourself. I fear death, okay? Is that what you want to hear? I'm a scaredy cat in the face of death, a chicken, a big blubbering baby. I'm more afraid of death than anyone else around. I'm off the clock Friday and instantly start dreading Monday. I wake up in the morning and fear the day is already over. Every minute of every day I fear that death will strike down before the art I create engraves my name into this world I'm living in. Alas, you have found your fallacy. Nico, revisit this part of yours. Why do you do art? Why do I do art? Why do I do art? Why do I do art? Well, because it's my calling, my purpose, my destiny. What makes it so? I don't know, it's always felt that way. Did you decide for it to be your destiny? No. Then who did? Your family? Your friends? God? No? Okay, well, I guess I did. Why? Well, I have high expectations for myself. I'm a perfectionist. Does this only apply to your art? Not really. It carries over through a lot of things. Then why has art become the destiny? Because art is what I do. And why do you do art? Listen, we're just going in circles. Just tell me. Nico, I cannot answer this on your behalf. If you are not the one to come to the conclusion, you will never truly believe it. You're running out of time, Nico. Ask yourself. As you wander the towers of your memory, ask yourself this question, or you may never know why. Only one more to do when you cannot
Montreal Morning's own C-list celebrity reporting on new developments regarding last night's freak service elevator accident, whereby local boy Nico has, to the relief of family and friends in attendance, awoken in hospital possessing proper faculties following a brief comatose state, which, despite difficulties of overcoming, may not have been his greatest obstacle. In addition to transient cerebral anemia, Nico, through a series of epiphanies, has conquered his artistic unconsciousness. An overwhelming disdain with his Sisyphean lifestyle recently caused said person's embarkment on a liminal journey through artistry. By confronting and impugning previously suppressed insecurities, he has consequently stripped them of their paralyzing power and, in turn, reminded himself of his love for creation. With his reawakened passion and body, Nico has set out to submit his poem, including newly added revisions encapsulating his revelation, before the fast approaching deadline abolishes the opportunity for vulnerability and exposure. Media attention of this story has urged landlords citywide to ensure proper maintenance of their apartments. Leaky faucets and squeaky floor repairs are at an all-time high, and many are saying that this boy is to thank. Godspeed to you, Nico. Godspeed to you and your crazy artistic endeavors. Gotta go. Alrighty then. It's time. Do you feel like getting closer? I'm ready. You know where to find me. I thought if I hadn't begun practicing since the very first divisions of my prenatal cells, I'd be too late. I thought that since I haven't dedicated every waking moment to my craft, I haven't given enough. Figured if I don't sacrifice my life for art, I shouldn't do it at all. I thought, I thought, I thought, and I let these thoughts prevail. Cause like dogma, I thought they were true. I went artless and empty, through a suffocating abstinence at the hands of my own flawed logic. But I challenged these beliefs and I learned my first lesson. Art begets art. Every moment engaging in this activity is fodder to the garden of my soul. It fructifies by the sustenance of itself, pouring life into the surrounding parts of my being. Art cultivates a balance in my life, so I must balance my life in order to cultivate more art. Any amount offers benefit, it doesn't have to take up all of my time, balance is key. When I have a moment, whether on the metro or in my bedroom, by the market or anywhere really, I can do art for as long or as little as I want. I don't want exile from this world, I want integration, and that will be better for me than nothing. My artwork is often accompanied by feelings of inadequacy, which wrongly associate with my self-worth that deteriorates with each passing glance at a work in progress. It can be better, it can be improved, I can do more, more, more. Which is true, I can always do more, I can always be more. But more is less if it demands fulfillment. It's unattainable, perfection is unattainable. When I put something down on paper, I'm left with words and a question and a choice. Do they say what I want to say? And if I feel they do, great. And if I feel they don't, that's great too. Either way, I have a choice to pursue them further, to revise or to leave them be. The decision, ultimately, is mine. My own to make. 
It's okay to be ambitious. It's okay to want the best. It's okay to push myself to the superlative limits. In fact, I will always encourage myself to do so. But it's not okay to let these desires prevent me from pursuing them in the first place. Like anything, at one point or another, I'll have to accept the words I write for what they are and not what they're not. And I'll have to live with the outcome. Art is a lot of different things. It's a bridge between thought and emotion, between people and cultures. It motivates change, inspires creativity. It listens and it talks and it communicates, bringing us simultaneously closer to reality than what we can ever consider to be real and further away from it than we could ever imagine. It's a lens that captures the world in its beauty and its ugliness, in hyperbolic, very similitudinous depiction of the human condition. Everything we aspire towards, everything we desire, everything we love and hate, what moves us, what makes us stop in our tracks and reflect on the magnitude of life and appreciate the importance of every single day and hour and each and every sacred breath we take. <laughs> but art is also not a lot of things. Mainly, it's not a way to escape death which has become my most important realization thus far. I do art not to escape death, but to enjoy life. Whether my workout lasts me is irrelevant. Whether my legacy persists for millennia is unimportant. Whether I insert myself into a literary canon that explodes me into the distant horizon of eternity matters less than any infinitesimal fragment of my decomposing existence after my inevitable demise. Even if their work survives, the figureheads of art, too, will die. Whether I do art or I don't, either way I will die. Death is intimidating, and that's an understatement. It's scary, it's undefeated. It's consanguinity that unifies us fellow mortals, and it's out of our control. One day it will knock on my door, and whether I'm hospitable or not, it will enter, and it will take me with it. But I refuse to let death take me in any other state than preoccupied. Death will have to drag me from my desk, peel me off the chair I'm sitting on, rip away the paper I'm writing on, pluck away the pen from the curled fingers of my clenched hands, leaving chaotic scribbles of mutiny and defiance, a swan song, an anthology of my wisdom and of my ignorance, a binding conclusion to the life that I've lived. And not because I won't be ready for death, on the contrary, because I will be living my life until the very end. With these new tidbits of information, I'm prepared to complete my poem. And with submission comes new insecurities, new worries, new fears. What if it's not good enough? What if it's rejected? What if I fail? And they're valid fears, but it's all they are, fears. If they materialize, and they're bound to from time to time, they'll no longer be fears. They'll be new realities, new challenges, new opportunities. Sometimes I won't be good enough. I'll be rejected. I'll fail. It'll hurt. I'll be disappointed. I might be discouraged. More than likely, it'll just plain suck. But I won't be afraid anymore. And I'll have gained experience and wisdom through the process that I can utilize when I take on new projects. I have the capacity to take on anything and everything. I will trudge forward into the unknown, fearless and ready. All I can do is all I can do is all I can do is all I can do. As I seal this envelope, as I turn away from its reception, as I submit this fucking poem, I abandon it. And I take a courageous leap into a new role, one that I've been unable to accept for myself until now. I am an artist. I am an artist. I am an artist. I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I am an artist. I am an artist.